Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is such a great interview between a boxer and his daughter or between a dad and a boxer. A brilliant father-daughter story. You're going to get so much from this. This is one of the most powerful interviews I think I've done. and I really love their honesty and candor about the sporting journey and about helping young people find their full potential through sport. I know you're going to find this really enriching parents. Uh, can I invite you to subscribe to this channel before you watch the interview so that you can get alerted to more of these interviews when they appear. As always with these interviews that I do, listen to the principles behind the conversation and then apply it to your family context. Apply in ways which are going to help you as a parent get better outcomes for your young people on their sporting journey. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Enjoy this interview. I'm just so excited to be joined uh, by Stacey and Eddie Copeland, who, who have both got a brilliant sports story. Both have been involved in sport in incredible ways. And I'm really looking forward to unpicking this father-daughter dynamic, uh, what's helped each of them be successful in that relationship, what the challenges have been. So, Eddie, can you introduce your daughter to us, please? Yes, uh, Stacey Copeland, um, the firstborn. Um, an Essex girl, as she uh, will not like me saying, but um, yeah, it's funny that uh, as my career was ending and then with the eye injury, uh, Stacey was born that year, so it was a bittersweet year. And then as time developed, uh, she was always a bag full of energy, loads of energy. I always wanted to play football and uh, um, box. We, we used to watch the Nigel Ben fights and so forth in the 90s. And as soon as it's over, we'd get the gloves on and we'd be uh, having a bit of a sparring session and so on. But um, oh, I'm just introducing her at the moment. I'm going to steal her thunder, so to speak. But yeah, she um, she took up uh, football. That was uh, the only one that she was allowed to do and did excellence at that. You know, got three England caps and so forth. And then she decided to finish at age 29 and start boxing which was a bit of a, a culture shock, so to speak, but, um, and she did very well out of it, which I've no doubt part of this conversation will say what she did. So that's introducing my daughter. She's a great kid, uh, love a load. She's, um, she makes a difference in people's lives. And that's one of the things that I'm proud about, not just what she's done sports wise, but you know, she set up the charity now, paved the way. And I've seen her even in a, in a boxing career when she's professional, she didn't want the ring card girls. She had the kids from her school going around with the ring card thing, you know, and the crowd loved it. They all applauded and, you know, whooped and cheered, you know, because, you know, some kids may never get that kind of experience again. So, um, so that's why I'm proud of her. She's done some amazing things in her life. That's amazing. We're going to unpack that. Bit. Stop now, Richard. Sorry? Edit the, edit the uh, Essex bit out and press stop. We're done. <laughs> As a dad of three or six kids, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave that in there, you know, trying to help them be proud of their county. Um, St Stacey, tell us about your dad. Uh, so my dad, um, he he's obviously one of my biggest inspirations. He was one of the people who got me into boxing. Um, although, you know, you can't make someone love something. I have my own uh, love for it uh, in my own right. But um, he was certainly a, a big inspiration of mine. But uh, not just because of what he's done in the ring because obviously he was a really accomplished exceptional boxer but for the fact that he didn't get to fulfill his potential sadly it was it was torn away from him because of his injury still achieved a lot but he didn't get to do everything that he, he you know had the potential to do and I think you know looking back in hindsight um at how he dealt with that and how he's dealt with that going forward I can appreciate it even more now that I've been through um you know a sports career myself like just how did I mean I, I I've got to do pretty much everything I wanted to do and I've got to have a long career and he didn't so I can um, even more so appreciate and admire the way that he dealt with that major setback well not a setback end to his career and his dreams and what he's gone on to do um, and obviously you know it, it, who he is as a as a, a dad um, a, a husband a person a friend to everybody um, is is what I'm most proud of in my dad but. Obviously, what he achieved as a boxer is incredible as well. And he was always a big inspiration to me as a coach because I know he'd done it. <laughs> so whenever he was coaching me and he'd say, avoid this or be careful of that, I knew, he'd, you know, I knew it was coming from someone who'd done it. And um, 
so that was I think that was a big inspiration as well because he's not just saying it he's actually lived it so uh, you know we, and other than that is, is you know one of my best mates I wouldn't say he's my best mate I've got a lot of better friends than him but um, <laughs> is uh, no he's, he's my best mate we, we're soul mates we're best mates and um, those times that we had in the gym together were just uh, dead precious for us you know uh, and going to fights going abroad what an amazing experience as father and daughter so we're both uh, dead good friends dead proud of each other we have a good laugh together um, and I think we're very very fortunate to have that brilliant so so you, so you would say your personalities are very similar then and, and um, in, in the way that you've supported each other through this journey together we, we, we've got a lot of similarities I think I'm pretty much 50-50 of my mum and dad but um, I have got a lot of my, my dad in me. A lot of my logic is like my dad. A lot of my approach to problems and, and life and things like that, I, I think I approach like like my dad. Um, so we are very similar in that way. I'm just a lot funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, so you, I mean, let's just focus on that career change. You, you know, you've got this successful daughter. She's playing football for England. Um, were you based in the States at that time or were you based here? I'd just come back, we met up in uh, Café Rouge where we used to meet um, when I used to come back from America and uh, I'd finished, I'd played, I'd played in Sweden after America actually, so that was the last place I played. So you were playing professional football? It, it, yeah, and then I came back and we met up in Café Rouge on, on Deansgate in Manchester and that's when that first conversation happened where... So Eddie, tell us about that, how did that go? Well, she said to me she was going to, uh, she said, I'm going to pack in the football, Dad. She had too many injuries. So I said, yeah, you know, common sense, you've done all that you, you can in the game. Um, and then she said, but I want to take up boxing. So the first thing that kicked in was the uh, parent. Mm. The parent side, oh, God, my, still my little girl, no matter how big she gets. Um, she's going to get in the ring and I, I know how dangerous it can be. Um, so at first I had a little bit of trepidation as to, is this the right thing or not? Then I realised that uh, there was no stopping Stacey. She was going to do it with me or without me. So I said, right, I'm going to do it with you because I want you to be the best that you can be. And I think I can help you with that. So we formed that uh, coach-boxer relationship. And, um, you know, we worked out the plan because we're both very much, uh, you know, that type where we plan what we need to do, what we need to work on, how we're going to get there, you know, with the various steps and so forth. And that's what we did. And the biggest task was getting a 29-year-old um, footballer who's had a lot of injuries, um, who, although has been around the gym doing the pads and the fitness regime and so forth, <clears throat> um, had not actually boxed competitively. So to get her up to one match fitness and two with the technical skills and abilities, um, that was a pretty uh, daunting challenge. But Stacey's a really hard worker. Uh, you know, she won't stop. And I'm the same. We won't stop until we've got it. You know, we'll try again and again and again until we get it. So Some kids get fed up with that, you know. <laughs> so you have this great foundation as father and daughter. That's what I'm kind of hearing during the football days, you know. Um, yeah. she, she's been away. Um, do, do you think that your success of being coach and boxer was... I mean, you're obviously a good coach anyway, Eddie, because you do, you do coach boxing. But do you think the ability to get it into that deep groove together was deeply founded on a good, honest, open father-daughter relationship in the first place. Stacey, do you, you're nodding, do you? 100%. And, and do you feel like... Me and my dad have got a special bond from when I was little, from just, you know, when, you know, when him and my mum, him and my mum split up, like before I was like one, and um, dad like made sure he, he saw me it was a big part of my life he never I think there was one weekend in all the ones I can remember when he couldn't come because he had this terrible crap brown hideous car that broke down and he was absolutely <laughs> devastated and um, other than that he never ever missed a single weekend you know however difficult things got in his own life or complicated as you know mum met someone new and all that he he never ever ever turned his back on me or left me or anything and and that bond it is everything to do with our relationship now and it'll never be any different. And that definitely was part of, you know, he's not at the forefront of your mind when you're doing pads and that, but that's the foundation yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that um, massive trust 
is is there that I I trust him more than um, not just in boxing, probably more than anyone in my life. Like you know, I, I trust my dad's advice. Is uh, I trust that he always puts me first, um, and that trust massive in a sport like boxing more than others because your health and safety is more at risk than other sports. I'd say, um, so that was paramount, definitely. So, so, so Eddie, when a young Stacey's playing football and she has a shocking game and she's either phoning in to Didn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eddie, how did you help her do honest evaluation uh, of, of her games? How, how did you, because you're a coach and, and you've got, uh, you know, I, I suffer with that as well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out and coach my son tonight in, in men's hockey after this, you know, and it's yeah. great, but it's a challenge. How did you, how did you handle those conversations with Stacey? You, you know, she wasn't living with you all the time. You know, you were seeing yeah. her. Oh, it sounds like you were a brilliant active man in her life. How did you handle those difficult conversations around football when she was younger? Stacey was fairly self-aware. She knew when she'd had a bad game. Yeah. And I wasn't a football coach, so I didn't know that much Terrible about football. football. I know. <laughs> I'd fall over the ball, mate, and that sort of stuff. But, but, as, um, but as a dad, as a dad listening to her be down or whatever, how, what, were, what was yeah. your, how, did you, how did you handle that? Well, what I used to do was, was just let her talk, let her get it out as to what she felt about it without making any comment or any criticism or anything like that. And then once she's got the emotional air out of the balloon, um, we can get her adult involved then, so to speak, as to, you know, what do you think you'd do different if, you, uh, if, if we had that game again, this type of thing, you know. And then she'd come to her own conclusions. Um, and then I'd either add my 10 pence with if I, if I thought it needed it, or if I thought it, she found a solution herself, I'd say, you know, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Stacey, is that how you remember those early conversations around sport with Dad, is that? Yeah, and to be honest, I think um, when it comes to football, like Dad can only do the drag back, that's it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, which I was dead impressed by when I was about six, and I got to about 10 and I was like, actually, that was all we could do. Um, so really... Yeah, <laughs> the technical and uh, tactical side of football isn't his thing anyway in boxing obviously it could give me loads of technical and tactical but to be honest whether it's boxing or football like any coach it's the same with any coach the coaches that have made the big impact on my life are not the ones that taught me to do a better jab or pass better or whatever I mean that's great and it's part of their role and it's what you want as a player or fighter obviously you want to improve and be the best you can be so it is important it's a significant part but it's not the most important part. Um, the most important part is the impact they have on you as a person, that helping you deal with setbacks, um, making you feel empowered to make your own decisions, to make mistakes, to figure stuff out, um, whatever it might be. Um, so so what that's what? the same with all coaches. I don't think the technical conversations are the most important. It's, it's how they impact you as a person, how they lead by example that matters most. So what, what is that? I think that's brilliant. And I, and I think that resonates with what a lot of people say. But what, what, give us some insight to what that looks like in the nitty gritty of that conversation. You've lost a fight, or you've had a bad training session, or you've got an injury. What, what, what is that? What are you as an athlete, or, and as a daughter in this context, looking for from dad in that conversation? Well, if I give you, if I give you two examples, then uh, in terms of injury, those have been some of my most difficult challenges. I knew better than someone who's been through it, um, and so. My dad was good at helping. Well, firstly, I knew straight away that I was talking to someone who's been there, who really understands. Because to people on the outside, if you haven't given every part of your whole being to a sport and had it taken away, you don't necessarily understand that devastation. From the outside, it looks like it's just a sport. What's the problem? Like everything else in your life is fine. You're not dying. It's not desperate. Like it's, but to you, it, it is everything in your life. It's part of your identity, your purpose. A massive part of you is taken away. So dad helped me with that because he understood that and he'd been there. And he, he tried to guide me in a way that I didn't end up losing my whole identity with it. I did, but he helped me put it in perspective and come back from it. And just having someone who totally understood makes you feel less alone with it anyway. So in terms of injury, that was really helpful. Um, but then also in terms of losing fights, he never addressed it straight away, which I think is the right thing. It's never a good thing when someone's just lost, when the, the forefront of everything is your emotion, because you're gutted that you've lost, especially if it's a big, big 
you know, there's a lot at stake, like at the World Championships, for instance. Um, it, it's massive. You, you're heartbroken. You do feel heartbroken. Um, and there's no point having that discussion straight away. So dad never did. He'd, he'd wait and then we'd get back in the gym and then he'd say, right, I think what you can do is this. So we never really had conversations about that was rubbish, that was rubbish, because it's, it, it's, it's not constructive anyway. Instead, he'd say, right, I think what you could do if you get that style of fighter again is this and try and do it better, uh, which I think was the right way to, um, to deal with it and to help me. Um, and there was loads of other ways, like knowing when to slow me down, because I could have a tendency to just keep, you know, overtraining, keep going and going. He knew when to pull me back and he knew the right things to say. Um, like a couple of things he said, when I was training and training and training for the Serbia tournament, he said the week before, I think he noticed I'd started to get a bit tired and he said, everything you do now for the next week, every drop of energy you use now, you won't have next week for the tournament. And that flipped the switch in my head that I knew I wanted all my energy for that tournament. And that was a turning point that if I hadn't have tapered at that point, I wouldn't have, you know, luckily I went to gold and got boxed for the tournament as dad had done a few years before. So that, that bit of advice was really crucial, but I trusted it. And you have to trust that. It's one thing, someone saying it and you going, no, no, I'm better. But I knew I could trust his advice. And the other one was to fight the fight and not the occasion when there was a lot of pressure. And th things like that really help. If you really trust the person, you'll, You'll, you know, you'll do it, and but you buy into it obviously because you you believe in them and they believe in you. It's really important that it's reciprocal. I, I love that. I love the way Eddie you described that, and I think Stacey's just described it in in how that worked out in your relationship. But just letting the that the air out of the emotion and the balloon yeah. down, really, and um, that takes incredible self awareness, mate, and self control because you you've got the tactical boxing brain, which could at that moment have given a long list of. Yeah, you know, here's a, here's my 17 points to move on, and I think that's one of the biggest things that that parents wrestle with. Because if you watch your kid do a sport for a long period of time, even if you've never played it or taken part, you, you get to know enough about the sport mm. to be able to yeah. start chirping along. But to have that self awareness, and you know, it, Eddie, you've been there, you've done it, you've got the t-shirt, and then you've got the t-shirt of disappointment as well of having to to give mm. up. I, mate, I think that's an amazing coaching example. And Stacey, do you think that's I love that story about you using kids. Was it from your school to 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 carry the number? I mean, your dad's obviously a developer of people. Is that uh, you know? Is that where you've got that from? That hunger to a lot, give of, it, a lot of that comes uh, from my uh, perspective on gender, though, and how women in particular are represented in the sports arena. And for me, you know, boxing was illegal for me as a little girl. I wasn't allowed to do the sport, and it was a long time before it was, um, you know, fought in the courts and, and, you know, we got the right to box. Um, and then still now, you know, you can do all the same training to dedicate your life to it and be less accepted in that sporting arena than somebody who, nothing personal against them, but somebody who's there just for um, sexual appeal and objectification. And, um, you know, I don't think that's helpful um, to the progress of women in sport. And I don't think it's a coincidence that where grid girls, podium girls, um, you know, uh, ring car girls, you know, whatever the, the different um, descriptions are, why women aren't doing as well in those sports. And so I think like we have mascots at Wimbledon, at football, and we're used to it. I, I don't see why that can't be the case in my sport. And it's a great opportunity for kids. So, um, but I think one thing that has been a big thing for me is that my dad and my granddad, as key male influences in my life, have always, I mean, obviously the women in my family have, but as male supporters, it's very, very important to have that male advocacy this, you know, when you, whatever it is, whether it's for uh, racism or homophobia or people with disabilities, whatever it is, it's really important that those dominant groups are allies as well. And it's really important that men support, you know, uh, their daughters, partners or women in general. It's key. So, and I've, I've had that. Um, so that's the key thing that it obviously perhaps makes you feel more able to stand up to things like that if you've got that support behind you. And do you think, do you think boxing would have been your first love then if those doors were open to you? It was my first love. It was what I did. Me and, you know, that, that love for boxing started like a lot of kids in my area with Rocky. I mean, I thought Rocky was real. And uh, me and my dad had watched Rocky. Well, we sort of went in between Rocky, Karate Kid and Bruce Lee, and every yeah. week would either be karate or boxing or whatever. And uh, that was when it started, you know, with my dad in the, in the house, sort of, you know, rolling about and doing it, watching the fights and boxing together and 
that it was just fun then like it is when you're a kid it was just a fun thing that i love to do and then obviously you get more serious as you as you get older brilliant guys i, I really really appreciate your time eddie what would you've got parents coming into your gym as you coach if you, if you had a chance to sit down and say to any young boxing parent now or, or, or the parent of a boxer who's kind of in the english pathway and starting to show a bit of attention and you had like the chance to have a socially distanced cup of tea or beer with them, whatever your <laughs> tipple is, it, um, if we're ever allowed to do that sort of thing again. Uh, what would you, uh, I know your coaching style would be to listen and ask questions, but if you broke that style for a for, for habit and, and just gave a little, a little speech of advice, what would you say? I'm saying one, <clears throat> don't get too precious about you being the coach. Because there are people out there who can help. It's like when Stacey um, started to progress and then uh, qualified for the GB. Mm. And she went to the European Championships. Some of the coaches there were boxers when I was boxing. Mm. So I knew who they were, Lee Pullen and people like that. They were great guys uh, and they had a lot of skills. They'd been um, training the GB squad for a number of years so that they're right at the forefront of the cutting edge of the latest um, uh, methods and, and, and training techniques and so forth so I was quite happy for Stacy to be developed by those people as well because sometimes um, people can get very precious about you know I'm only going to train them because they either want the credit for it or something like that mm. um, so I'd say that to them and um, two, you have to kind of like separate the, the coaching and the parent role. Um, but sometimes they do overlap a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah. And Stacey, I just, I want to pick up on that theme of yours. That's clearly a passion to young girls trying to pursue sport. I mean, I've done some work with, with rugby teams and I think one of the most heartbreaking things I do with, England under 18 girls was going around and chatting with them about what the, some of the biggest challenges with their parents. And I was shocked at how many times mum um, and dad don't think I should be, this isn't a girl's sport came up. And I was, I was flabbergasted by that and naive, my own naivety showing through there. So, so what, what, what would you say, what would have you said to those girls if you'd been walking around with me in that um, physio thing? What, what would your. I'd, I'd just share my story. And if, you know, I, I wasn't immune to that. You know, despite having a very supportive family, despite being really dedicated, hey Poppy, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, despite being very, um, you know, dedicated to my sport and having great support and everything, I wasn't immune to those messages that society gives you. And what you have to do is unlearn what you've been taught by society. And that's what I had to learn because, you know, I, I did always think growing up that women's sport wasn't as good, that we were the other, we were the inferior, we were the not as good as, you know, and, and much worse than that. And that's because that's what I was being told all the time, that there was something wrong with me for wanting to do those sports um, and so on. And it took me a long, long time to realise that wasn't true. And part of that was education, educating myself on the journey and history of women in sport and what we've achieved learning not just to compare it to men's sport and look, look at it in and of itself. And when we do, we see there's some pretty phenomenal things that have happened. Um, and then having those role models, like, you know what I mean? Be, being exposed to, if you like, and aware of women who've achieved incredible things, whether that's in, not necessarily in sport, but, you know, running across Africa. Um, you know, I've got a couple of friends who've, who've, who've achieved that. Um, Sorry, my thing's gone off because I just got a phone call. Sorry. Um, yeah, I've got a friend who ran across Africa. I've got another friend who uh, rode across the Pacific in, in the first, you know, uh, crew of uh, four women to do it and so on. So I'm fortunate that now I'm at a stage where I am educated about the history of women in sport. I've unlearned the, the untruths that I was told about women not being as good as. And now I've got loads of role models um, and examples of women who are doing incredible things in sport and in physical yeah. challenges. Um, so I, I would say to them to educate themselves, to, um, you know, find out for themselves and also to keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brilliant. And then I'd, I'd share my story with them and hope, hopefully it can inspire them because I think that process would have been quicker for me if I'd have heard from somebody like me back then or even known of somebody like me. 
um, perhaps that process would have been, I wouldn't have spent so long feeling like there was something wrong with me and feeling like playing for England women and not the England team was not really anything to shout about. Actually, it's something to be really proud of and I wish I'd have known that then like I do now, but I do now and it's my job now to spread that message as much as I can to all the young girls and boys coming through. Mate, I love that. I want to. I want to finish there. Um, parents, do check Stacey out on social media. Check Eddie out on as well. But I guess Stacey's a bit more active than Eddie is. And um, Eddie, Stacey, I'm so grateful for your time. I, I, I really I, thank you for the honesty and sharing your story. And I know that that's going to be encouraging, but also challenging to a number of parents across all sports, not just boxing or. The, or, or football but but I, I really appreciate that and I, I love what you're both doing and I, I think should, uh, share this final story Richard if you want oh, yeah yeah go on so these shorts are the ones that I wore for the Commonwealth title wow and I should have worn these uh eight weeks before but unfortunately there was an incident at the arena um a, a stabbing sadly in the reception and the whole thing got cancelled literally as I was just finishing my warm-up to go out which was you know horrible so I ended up wearing them for the Commonwealth title. It was the only time I've worn these shorts. So I had dad on them, so it was like he was in the ring with me. Um, but this year, I've got on all my shorts. It says boom, boom. And I had this on all my shorts. Let me just point out Manchester, which is where I was brought up. So Essex don't count. But dad, <laughs> do, you want to tell them, do you want to tell them why boom, boom is important to us? Yeah, there was a, a, a boxer called uh, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Um, his father um, was a boxer, but due to the war, I think it was the Korean War or something, um, he got injured, so he didn't fulfil his dreams. But his son, Ray Mancini, did win that world title. And a, they did a film of it. And in that film, you see his father with his hands clasped, clasped together um, doing that boom boom moment. So we picked up that mantra and... Uh, you know, when she started boxing, we said, there'll be some boom, boom moments, don't you worry. Mm. And when yeah. she when she won her first ABA title and they lifted her hand, she saw me and I'm in the corner with my hands like that doing that. I love it. I <laughs> love boom, it. Boom, boom. Yeah. Brilliant. Got, got Excellent story. Fantastic daughter, father. Great coaching examples. I really appreciate your time, guys. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you.